New Orleans was aflame with racial hate and street violence. They were trying to desegregate two elementary schools, and this little girl was ordered by a federal judge to go into one of them. And she was there all by herself. The whole white population had boycotted the school. No other children with her. And I happened to see this little child going into a school in New Orleans at the age of six to the first grade. I thought to myself, I would like to know that child. I'd like to know what's happening to her. One day, having now spent months getting to know Ruby and being rather puzzled at how normal and stoic and strong she was, going through this kind of living hell, 200 people waiting at 8.30 in the morning to tell her they were going to kill her. 200 people in the afternoon telling her they were going to kill her. 25 federal marshals taking her into that building. What would you expect? You'd expect that a child going through that would pretty soon start developing symptoms and be in trouble. I waited and waited and there weren't any symptoms and she kept going and learning and being the ruby that she was, a normal six-year-old black child, very poor background, parents didn't even know how to read and write. Humble people. One day her school teacher said to me, she'd been looking out of the window and she saw Ruby yet again coming to school. This time she watched carefully and she noticed that as Ruby was walking past this mob of heckling men and women, she stopped and the teacher saw her lips moving. I said, Ruby, your teacher told me today that uh, she saw you talking to those people in the street. She said to me, Doctor, I told her that I wasn't talking to the people. I said, well, who were you talking to, Ruby? She said, I told her I was talking to God. Could you tell us, uh, tell our audience uh, why you took them out? Because I didn't want them to go to school with the niggas. Why were you praying to God? She said, I was praying for the people in the street. I said, why were you doing that, Ruby? And she said, uh, well, because I wanted to pray for them. I said, you did want to pray for them? Yes, she said. I said, Ruby, why would you want to pray for those people? And then she looked at me and her eyes widened and she said, well, don't you think they need praying for? That stopped me cold. Where did she get that idea, Ruby? She said, well, my mommy and daddy have told me that and the minister told me that in church. She said, I pray for them every morning and I pray for them every afternoon when I go home. I say for the mothers to keep their kids out of school. We're white people. We don't want them to go to school with niggas. I have five, and they're not going to school with no niggas. But I said, Ruby, those people are so mean to you, and they're so nasty to you. You must have some other feelings toward them besides wanting to pray for them. She said, I just keep praying for them, and I just hope that God will be good to them. I said, what do you say in the prayer, Ruby? I always say the same thing. What's that, Ruby? Well, I always say, please, dear God, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Now, I'd heard that someplace before. And I heard it in that kitchen, in that extremely impoverished house, and it silenced me. I had no more questions to ask. Here is a child whom we learned in the 60s to, uh, to say that she came from a culturally disadvantaged and a culturally deprived home. They were illiterate, her parents, and yet they had taught her biblical truths in a way that she was to live them out. I'd like to see some of us who have fancy educations bring up our children similarly. Do we? I'm not so sure we do. They hadn't read any of these books in childhood. They didn't know anything about this or that stage of moral or psychosexual development. But boy, they knew how to bring up a child in such a way that she could call upon the statements that Jesus called upon and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Amos. They had memorized in their minds, in church, whole passages from the Old and New Testament and they tried to live it out. 
And it would be nice if some of, some of us would try to live things out, not only get an A in biblical literature, or an A in moral, moral analysis, or an A in uh, Southern history, but uh, to get the kind of A Ruby got.